This week on Scam School, we're taking it to the streets. This episode of Scam School brought to you by Busted Tees and Audible.com. Get a free audiobook at www.audiblepodcast.com slash scam school. Welcome to the only show that can outdrink your uncle. Scam School, the only show dedicated to social engineering at the bar and on the street. I'm your host, Brian Brushwood, and by now, most of you have over 100 kick-ass tricks that you can pull to blow your friends' minds. And I'm starting to get a lot of emails from people wanting to know where they could get more experience. They want the flight time so that they can become an expert. When I first started in Magic 15 years ago, I started off by street performing in Austin, Texas. And since San Francisco is one of the meccas of street performers, I thought we would take a trip to the street. Now, I know you guys expect a new trick every week, and I don't want to leave you high and dry. So in the meantime, I want you to grab 16 matches and set them up just like you see here. One giant square of three matches on a side, and one small square in the middle of one match per side. Now, here's your challenge. While the show's going on, see if you can figure out a way to move only four matches and end up with exactly three squares. Again, start with them like this. Move exactly four matches and end up with exactly three squares. You pull it off, I'll buy you a beer next time I see you. In the meantime though, let's check out San Fran. Hey dude, how's it going? I'm Brian. Pleasure, I'm Lance. Awesome, Lance, how long have you been uh, playing on the street? I've been doing this for about a year and a half. And uh, all just here in San Francisco? All here in San Francisco, and I played up in Portland. I've done it all the way down to Venice Beach. I've played in Long Beach. I've played pretty much all of California. What kind of money can a talented performer get on the street? Do you know the range, like, like are there legends of street performing who are pulling in uh, crazy bank? I don't know if there's legends, but uh, I, I definitely pull in a good, a good amount. Um, yeah, good enough that you don't have to, you know, sling hash at a restaurant or anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to do that. But uh, I, I make about a hundred dollars if I'm if I push it, and it takes about three hours, four hours. But I've been able to uh, make decent, maybe about. 200 bucks a day and, and, and I'm take sure there's different everyone you can tell they have their own tactic uh, for, for trying to build up a crowd and then get them ready to give them money and that kind of thing yeah but what I'm curious is how do you get started on this because when I first started I knew that everyone I respected in magic had done street performing at some point mm -hmm. but I didn't know what the rules were if, it, if, if can anyone just go out to any street corner and start performing or like um, how did you figure stuff well out? for me I I just went and gathered buckets and I came out here and I set up one time over at In-N-Out, yep. burger over there, and I made $40, I had a broken wrist. Um, I just really realized that I, I could just go do what I wanted to do, right? right? And um, from then on, I never really got hassled with. The cops uh, would come and hassle me um, once every two months or... Now when you say hassle, like they would, they would come up and would they threaten to, to put you in jail or something? Uh, it got pretty heavy a little bit ago, but uh, they, they would just tell me to move, pack on. Get just move down the line a little bit, and, and you would do that. You would just pack up oh, and move your stuff. Of course, I'd listen all the time. Okay. Um, and I just move down here, you know, and yeah. not get in trouble. Now, different areas seem to all have their own different rules. I know down at Venice Beach, Beach there's some kind of structured system where you get assigned a space and stuff. Yeah. Is it, do they have a similar thing here? They they do have a similar thing here. Um, you go to, to uh, the S Pier 39 Port Authority, right? And you sign up for a permit, and you can you can play on any one of these spots that have a square. And you have to you pay about 50 bucks a month to get a permit, and okay. you get a time slot, which is on like the signs. There's signs everywhere on this strip. Oh, I never even noticed. And, they and actually have set time. Yeah, set time for a performance. And but for me, I could come out here and play whenever I want. Are those primo spots, the squares, and that's why they're paying the money for them? Um, like that spot over there. That's spot seven. That's a that's a big money spot, basically. Okay, because um, of high traffic. Yeah, and this spot right here, it's it's. There, there's a big sensory uh, like overload going on out here, so it's not very 
very big, good paying. Right, and plus you got lots of traffic going on. Yeah, you got lots of things going on all around you right here. So I was always worried about, like, you know, I was terrified of the idea of the police coming and harassing me. So I, I wasn't sure what the legal status of performing was. And I, right before we started interviewing, I asked, you know, how are you allowed to do that? You mentioned that you had a federal law protecting yeah. you. Tell me yeah. about that. I have a federal law protecting uh, all musicians that play basically like a, a drum on, on free land. I oh, can, no kidding. I, I, yeah, the drummers get a federal law protecting them, and I also have an attorney to back that up. So. No kidding. Yeah. Now, is there a, a website resource that you could talk about the legality of, of because on the one hand, I know that, uh, that uh, you know, the police, uh, that's the number one thing I hear is about getting harassed by the police, getting asked to move on. Yeah. Uh, and I've read everything from, from it depends on the location to no, anytime, anywhere, it's constitutionally protected free speech on public land. Um, San Francisco is uh, one of the most different cities. You can really kind of come out here and do what you want. Um, right. A lot of other cities are going to have trouble. You're going to run into something. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm always ready for that. Um, but here, throughout the whole entire year that, and, and a half that I've been doing this, I've made friends with all the performers out here. Mm -hmm. And so we all basically work together. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not about the money anymore. It's just about pleasing the people and, you know, putting on a performance and the money just comes. And it's, it's about being successful at, within yourself. Yeah. It took me about a year and a half to get there, you know? Do you have any advice on starting to build an audience? Is there something you do? Do you announce a show? Or I guess the nice thing about music is you just get started and everybody notices. Yeah, I kind of sometimes have an automatic crowd. But yeah. uh, now I structure my music to where I, I basically capture everybody and um, I have levels of playing. I have increased like the loudness and my beats and I change it up and bounce my sticks off the ground and like as soon as I start building up a crowd I get it big, you know. And so is there a is there a specific moment you set up a challenge to get people to donate money or do you just kind of keep playing and people throw in the cash? As I, they, I as just they uh, I just play super hard and um, usually when the people start putting the money in I'm really on time with it. It becomes like a game. The more I drum the more money I get, you know. Awesome. Now a lot of the people who watch Scam School are people who by now have built up a bunch of cool tricks and they would love to get more experience performing with people and they want the freedom to perform for anyone who's interested without having to schedule a gig. Like let's say they, they're doing it for the love of performing. Logistically, what should they find out before they sit down and get started? Um, I would just say go for it. You say just get out yeah, there and you, do it. I mean, if you got the idea, you might as well run with it and see what what happens, you know? Yeah. You can't nothing nothing bad can come from it unless, as long as it's something good, you know? Well, dude, Lance, thanks so much, man. Best of luck. Thank you. All right, gang, I want to take a minute to tell you about Busted Tees. The guys over at College Humor set up the site as a depot for funny shirts back in 2004, and they've been putting out the most awesome designs you're going to find on the interwebs. It doesn't matter if you're into video games, movies, geography, politics, science fiction, or just wrapping your torso with something weird, Busted Tees literally has you covered. They're the coolest items of clothing since windbreakers were invented. Windbreakers are cool, right? Yeah? Windbreakers? You might have seen a Busted Tee or two pop up in movies like Knocked Up or shows like Scrubs. Now you can have one for your very own forever and ever and ever. And they're printed in the good old U.S. of A. on high quality super soft materials in a sweatshop free environment so you won't be plagued with guilt when you order them, which is, you know, that's always a plus. Head on over to BustedTees.com right now. Actually, actually finished watching this video first. Then head over to Busted Tees, start scrolling and get ready to find the shirt of your dreams. Your bizarre, hilarious dreams. BT Dubs, make sure to enter the promo code SCAMSCHOOL at checkout and receive 10% off your order. But most importantly, keep me swimming in those drinks. Hey, I'm Brian. What's your name? Angel Man. Angel Man. Yeah, that's true, sir. How long have you been street performing, Angel Man? I've been a Man? professional street performer for almost 27 years now. Get out of town. Nah, my first 20 years was a professional fire dancer. And then after I got to a point where that was not being very good for my liver or my lungs, I decided to pick up the art of designing a costume since it's becoming popular all over the world because of digital uh, technology. I wear this costume and people walk by and they take a picture with me. That's awesome. Okay, so is that is that mostly here in San Francisco or you tour around, perform all over the place? I can perform anywhere in the world, but I, I choose San Francisco because feel that nice, cool air. Yeah. Without this costume being aired out with nice, cool air, it would be way too hot to wear other places like Los Angeles, where I got my start four years ago in front of Chinese Man Theater. Wow. That I decided to come up here was where the air was a lot cooler. And because of that, I have I found out that no, not only can I wear this costume and present a personality as Angel Man, 
I also don't have the competition of Batman, Spider-Man, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis, and all these other people around me. Absolutely. Now, a lot of the people watching the show are going to be people who have learned a few magic tricks and they want to get experience by performing for real people on the street. What do they need to know before they get started street performing? Oh, that's such an easy question to answer. If you really want to be successful as a street performing artist, you have to really look inside yourself and find a love for who you are so that you can find that love and see yourself in other people. Because the people, the public around are not stupid. Right. If you do not like people, they will figure that out almost immediately. But if you do like yourself and you see yourself in other people and you're able to approach people in a courteous, respectful, friendly manner, they will immediately respond and you'll be successful on the street. How do you pick the right spot to street perform? Well, uh, you find a spot where there's a lot of traffic going by and where you're not getting, you know, you're not interfering with other people's businesses around here because sometimes that happens. But uh, generally speaking, in Europe or Australia, there's lots of large plazas. So there you don't interfere with hardly anybody and pretty much the public is very responsive. Do you ever have to deal with like police harassing you, chasing you off? Um, actually, uh, no, not me. Now, there's some people who are obviously not in, in, not, do not like people and they don't like themselves or they're under the influence of alcohol or drugs or whatever. And they are, you know, sometimes they're very abusive to the public. I myself am very much appreciated by the, uh, by the police because they see that everything I try to do, I try to be a positive influence to people walking by. What's the best part about street performing? Uh, freedom, oh, absolutely. If you are a free thinking person and you like to consider yourself a critical thinker, then the whole notion of being free in your thought and in your actions and whatever you want to do in your life becomes the paramount issue of your life. Awesome. And to me, uh, being a free person to be able to perform what I want to, where I want to, uh, and work for no one but myself is, is the best expression for this individual. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much. No Appreciate problem. it. Awesome. Okay, gang, let's talk about Audible. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 75,000 titles to choose from to be downloaded to your iPod, MP3 player, played back anytime, anywhere. Choose from books in every genre, science fiction, thrillers, drama, comedy, business, history, and more. Here's the best part. Head on over to audiblepodcast.com slash scam school and you get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. One 100% free, dude. Head on over to audiblepodcast.com slash scam school for your free audiobook. And you know who I recommend? I recommend you check out Born Standing Up, written and narrated by Steve Martin. It's totally unabridged. And if you have ever wondered what it's like to pay your dues, to get started in performing and magic and comedy, in being an entertainer, this absolutely nails it. It's a story of how Steve Martin started at age 10 selling guidebooks at Disneyland and ended up with the biggest concert draw in the history of stand-up by 1978. More importantly, why he walked away from stand-up afterwards. And the best part is, it's totally free. Head on over there. If you want to get started in performing and you're looking for flight time, street performing is a great way to get started. You don't have a boss and nobody's going to tell you when you can and can't start, except for maybe the police. You'll want to check on that. There's a fantastic book that I wish was out back when I was getting started 15 years ago called Be a Street Magician by David Groves. This is one of the best researched books on street performing I've ever read. It covers everything from the constitutionality of free speech, how to deal with police officers, how to build a crowd, and how to develop an act that'll make you money in the long term. But when you do get started, my experience was I did not make a lot of money at first, but the experience was absolutely amazing. I want to hear about your success stories and failure stories doing exactly this stuff, so post them at the boards at revision3.com slash scam school, where you can see all of our episodes right back to episode one. But now it's the important question. Were you able to pull off my challenge to you, sir? Take a look. If you were able to pull off something like one of these, then congratulations. You get the basic winner merit badge. See all those extra lines you have laying around that aren't doing anything? That was sloppy work, son. But if you got an answer like one of these, then congratulations, you get the advanced merit badge because these are squares that have no extra matches laying around. Now, if you want to suggest what you want to see in future episodes of Scam School, write me directly at brian at revision3.com. If you're doing the Twitter thing, you can follow the show at twitter.com slash scam school or find out when I am in your hometown by following me personally at twitter.com slash schwood. Next week, we're going to be learning from an ornithologist how you can repair a broken baby bird's nest using hot glue and silly string. But until then, I've got a train to catch.